Some of you guys actually found the mic attached to the straw in my mid-year book freakout tag to be pretty iconic slash hilarious, so maybe it'll make an appearance in a future video, who knows? Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Alessandro and today I'm bringing you another reading vlog. I actually filmed a vlog over the past few days that was kind of like a reading and writing combination vlog, but I didn't get a ton of great footage and as you can kind of tell from my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather right now, so I decided to scrap that vlog and restart with doing just a reading vlog. But do not worry, I know you guys are probably wondering where another writing vlog is and I promise I will have one for you very soon because I have some new ideas circulating in my brain regarding my writing projects. The plan for this video though is to read The City of Brass by S.A. Chakravorty, which I'm actually pretty... A pretty decent chunk through already. I've been reading this book for almost two weeks, I just haven't had a ton of time to sit down and read, and this is the kind of book that you really need to get into. It's high fantasy, I really have to sit down and really engross myself in the world um, to make some to make any sort of progress, to be honest. But I'm really enjoying it so far, I'm really excited to see where it's going. I'll talk a little bit more about the plot a little bit later in the video. The plan is also to reorganize this, even though it looks, the bookshelf looks okay right now, it is pretty dusty, and I would kind of like to change around the order of the books. Um, and then also I'm thinking about maybe suspending the use of my TBR cart for a little bit and putting some other stuff on there and getting these books onto the shelf as well. And later in the video we'll talk a little bit about the writing projects I'm thinking of working on in future writing vlogs because I have been working on some projects that I've been working on in, the, in, working on in past videos, including my adult romance novel called Project OCA. But there is another idea I have that's kind of going to be a larger scale, longer term project that I want to talk to you guys about. But like I said, we'll talk about la that later in the video. So for now, I'm going to get some reading done and I will catch up with you guys in a little bit. Alright, hello everybody, it's time for reading update number one. Um, I'm reading The City of Brass, like I said, by S.A. Chakraborty, which is a historical fantasy novel. In this book, we are following our main character, Nari, who's a con woman living on the streets in 17th century Cairo. She's very smart, she's kind of like whip-smart, very sarcastic, really funny um, kind of person, and she does a lot of things like palm readings, other kind of like rituals to kind of help people cure their health conditions. She kind of doesn't really believe in the power that she has, but she does kind of have a secret healing ability that she doesn't really know a lot about. But during one of the rituals where she's trying to cleanse um, someone's body of an evil spirit, she actually ends up summoning an ancient jinn warrior spirit. This jinn's spirit's name is Dara, and he tells Nari that she's actually bound to the city called Daivabad. So this book series is called the Daivabad Trilogy, and Dara and Nari have to now travel to Daivabad to kind of make sure Nari is safe because she's actually not safe in Cairo after this ritual takes place. Some evil spirits are after her. I also didn't know this at the time I started this book, but it's actually a dual point of view book. So the other point of view we follow after we get a first few chapters of Nari's point of view, we get the point of view of Ali, who is the prince of Daivabad. I think what this book is already doing a really good job of is that it's not a super action-packed book, although there are some moments like of intense action, I would say for sure. From Ali's point of view, we kind of see what the situations are like in Daivabad, because I don't want to explain the whole thing right now, it's a little bit complicated, but basically there are a number of different jinn tribes that live within the city itself. Also, people who are half human, half jinn, and aren't really of the same social status as pure-blooded jinn. And during the time of this first book, at least, there's a lot of, I think, like, simmering tensions that are that are taking place, basically, where the people who don't have as much social standing are kind of getting frustrated with the pure-blooded rule. And that's kind of what we're seeing from Ali's point of view. According to Goodreads, I am 42% of the way through the book. Like I said, I've been reading this for almost two weeks, which is kind of typical for me for reading a fantasy novel. I do have the, the day off today of work, so I would really like to finish this book and just take a lot of time to read and then maybe start another one. So I will catch up with you guys a little bit later once I've done some more reading.
everyone good morning i hope you are still doing well in this part of the video i kind of want to do a more like bookshelf dusting reorganization type style thing because even though i really like the way my bookshelves are laid out right now it's probably been it's probably time for them to be dusted and reorganized a little bit i do have some more books that i think i want to put on the shelf i'm also thinking about maybe putting the books that are on my tbr card onto my shelf and just having a tbr section of my shelf because i do have some other purposes i could use the tbr card for so first things first is getting all the books off the shelves so get the books off the shelves dust and then we will do some reorganizing So the shelves are now free of books and any other miscellaneous items. And here, here is the situation of the books. It is quite severe. There are quite a bit of books all over my bed. Please ignore the other messy parts of my room. My room also probably needs to be cleaned very soon. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna dust and then we're gonna get these books back on and do a little bit of reorganization. Okay, so now that all the shelves are dusted and wiped down and clean and they look really nice again, I think it's time to decide how I want to put the books back on my shelf. This is kind of an awkward angle, I know, and I'm so apologize about the lighting. I usually film with my ring light when I'm sitting here, but I'm just on my tripod today. What I usually do is something like my hardcover general fiction books on the bottom shelf. On this shelf, I do like more YA middle grade. And then on the shelves above, I do romance and nonfiction. I think what I'm going to do is something similar to that and still put my more general fiction books on this shelf, um, but I'm also going to add some of my TBR books onto the shelf from the DPR cart. So I think to start off, I'm definitely going to put some of my Dan Brown books, like The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons down here. The bottom shelf also just tends to hold more weight, so it's, I think, better to put hardcover books on the bottom anyway. I think I actually am also going to grab The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi, which is one of the books on my TBR right now, and put it here. And I think I'm going to grab Lessons in Chemistry as well, which I really want to read soon because I bought this book several months ago and I have not read it yet and I really want to read it. Next up, I have some like other random books that don't really fit in with my other shelves like organization system. So this like mystery thriller is like Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I have like a random Agatha Christie. I have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. And then like I said, some other books like historical fiction and contemporary literary fiction like The Hate You Give and The Last Bookshop in London. So next up, like I said, I usually keep my YA and middle grade books here, like Percy Jackson, Heroes of Olympus. I have the two Darius the Great books and the Renegades trilogy. I just decided to keep this the same for now. Um, I really like this setup. I like having this stuff here. And yeah, I like it the best this way. Switching angles. I, for I forgot how hard it is to film like these bookshelf reorganization things because it's like you have to keep going up and up and up with a tripod and changing things around. It's crazy. Anyway, now comes the hard part because I really want to have this vinyl of Jennifer Hudson playing Aretha Franklin in Respect on the shelf. I'm a huge Jennifer Hudson fan, huge Aretha Franklin fan, huge soul music fan, so I really want to have this here because it's just been kind of sitting on my dresser for a while. The problem is I have a number of romance books that I want to keep on the shelf, so I'm thinking maybe this will turn into nonfiction for the time being. I have books like On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I also have a book called Gone, which is about a woman losing a very expensive violin. And then I also have this book I think is called Everybody Else is Perfect, which is about the editor-in-chief of, I think, Nylon Magazine, and she is very famous, and she wrote a uh, memoir, and I really want to read this still. I also have some albums from the Korean girl group Mamamoo. They are my hands-down number one period favorite group of all time. Um, I have the four albums from their Four Colors, Four Seasons project, and I might probably put these in front of Jennifer Hudson. The higher we go, the more nervous I get about my whole box fort tower situation falling over completely. <laughs> Okay, we're finally on to romance, which is definitely the predominant genre in my book collection. I think starting out, we should put the three Emily Henry books that I have on my shelf, even though I haven't read People Who've Been On Vacation, I just like them to all be together. Next up, I have my two Casey McQuiston books, so the iconic Red, White, and Royal Blue and my other favorite, One Last Stop. I'm also going to put The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, The Charm Offensive, and Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. And then of course we have the Akatar books that I have. So I have A Court of Mist and Fury, Wings Rune, and A Court of Frost and Starlight. I just finished A Court of Mist and Fury a few weeks ago and I'm planning to do A Court, um, a court of Wings and Rune reading vlog very soon. I have a few more romance books, but I'm not 100% sure you would put them in like the strictly romance category. They more have like romance elements to them. And that's books like Pachinko, Daisy Jones and the Six, and The Shanghai Girls. And of course, no bookshelf is complete without my very important Pokemon knickknacks. 
All right, so this is the final tour of the bookshelf. I think it turned out actually very, very well. I really like kind of the new organized system I have in place here. We have romance, we have my more albums and my like um, nonfiction stuff. We have YA and middle grade, and of course the more general fiction stuff slash some of the books that are on my TBR. I have short hair now, the straw mic is back, and I finished City of Brass. We're also going to ignore the fact that I sound very congested right now. I'm still kind of getting over the cold I was fighting last week, but I did want to take a little bit of time to wrap the vlog and also give you guys some writing updates. I finished The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty last night. I kind of binged the last 150 pages or so of it. I have to say overall it was a really positive reading experience, but I did end up feeling pretty disappointed at the end. And this isn't to say it's a bad book or that it's not well written because I would actually argue it is a good book and it is well written and I really see why it is so popular and so loved. So starting with the good things first, I would definitely say this book had some really excellent world building. Probably the best world building I've read in a fantasy series. That's not like a super you know, I don't know if I can even say that because I haven't read that much fantasy, but from what I've read, I really enjoyed the way S.A. Chakraborty built this world, especially the city of Daivabad itself. Each part of Daivabad was described with a lot of description, a lot of vivid imagery, a lot of really nice writing, and I liked how she made, like, because Daivabad's a really, if you've read City of Brass, you would know, Daivabad's a really diverse place with a lot of different jinn tribes living there, and she gave each kind of quarter that the people visit in each, what, each of the six jinn quarters, which we don't really technically see all six of them in the book, but the ones we do visit she gave very descriptive descriptions of. I just overall really liked the atmosphere of this book. You could kind of tell it was like kind of like a hot, humid sometimes place, especially like when the book starts out in Cairo, Egypt. So our main character Nari starts off the book living in Cairo. And even when you get to Ali's point of view, the other character we follow, once he's in Daivabad, the opening chapter with him starts out with him talking about the weather in Daivabad. Or it was just a very atmospheric read, and I really like books like that, where it's you can kind of really kind of like almost feel like the weather of the world you're living in. This is something that's very important to me, especially in fantasy books that are longer, because it's like you really want to make sure the setup is really strong so you stay engaged throughout the book. I also really enjoyed the characters in this book. I think they were really well done, again, just like the world building. They were really interesting, they were really quirky. Again, I think she does such a good job of giving each character's like unique personality traits and a unique voice. And a lot of the discussions and a lot of the plot of the book was about the tensions that have been going on for years in Daivabad regarding the separation of the other Jin, tri jin tribes, especially those of the Daivas. It's kind of confusing. I don't really want to get into like the Jin versus Daiva thing right now because even I was confused while reading it. But I think S.A. Chakraborty really handled these conversations well and really made it interesting, especially for her characters who were wanting to discuss the problems with all the tension and all the different ethnic divides. So those were kind of like the positive things I really liked about City of Brass. And unfortunately, there were a couple of negative things just a few, but the few things that were negative really kind of held the book back for me. I did end up giving the book three and a half out of five stars because I think for the first 200 pages, I was really invested in it. I really wanted to love it. I really wanted to like really fall in love with this world and this series. And I just ended it just feeling so like eh about it. I think it comes down to a couple of things. One is the pacing for sure. This has become such a big thing for me, not only in fantasy books, but in any of the books I read. If the pacing is off or if I feel like it's just dragging or there's large swaths of time where just like nothing is happening or there's like too much setup, I really just tend to lose interest. And I know this is kind of a hallmark of first books and fantasy trilogies, like there's just a lot of setup, but I feel like maybe this is not a fair comparison, but to the book Jade City by Fonda Lee that I really liked, Jade City's pacing was much stronger, even though it was also a very setup heavy book, because by page 400, in the City of Brass, even though things were kind of heating up and the plot was starting to move again, by that time I didn't really, not care, but I didn't really feel as invested in the story as I was like on page 200 because I was like, you know what, I'm kind of ready for this to be wrapped up now. And I would say the pacing was really good for the first half of the book and then 
it kind of the ending kind of gave me like Sarah J Mass esque whiplash because like the last sixty pages were crazy, um, and the plot twist at the end was very unexpected, but it was still well done. But overall, I just think the pacing it just didn't quite hit the spot for me. Also, I would say for the first half of the book, a lot of the explanations were done well regarding like the um, different Jin tribes. If you've read this book and you know more about it, maybe you can enlighten me a little bit because I was confused at first about like the difference between like the Jin and the Daeva because one of the main characters, Dara, who is the Jin, Jin warrior that Nari summons at the beginning of the book, explicitly says, I'm a Daeva, not a Jin. The whole explanation between Daeva and Jin was a little bit confusing at first and I definitely had to go back and reread it a few times, which is not a bad thing in any way. I just kind of, it just took a lot of time for me to really understand what was going on and like why the tribes were separated the way they were. However, I found the lore and the history behind what the situation is in Daeva about to be really interesting, so that's another plus for the book. Overall, it was a good reading experience, I would say for the most part, minus the ending. It did take a long time for me to, a long time relatively for me to get through the book because it took about three weeks for me to read it. I'm not like so disappointed that I'm like never going to continue the trilogy because I would like to read the next book, Kingdom of Copper. I just don't think I'm going to get to it anytime soon. That being said, I think I would recommend this book to people who like a lot of world building, very atmospheric reads, interesting characters, a book kind of um, employing the chosen one trope. And if you like history, I think you will also really like this book too. Okay, now that City of Brass is done, let's talk about writing for a little bit. I know a lot of you are probably wondering, like, where is my next writing vlog? Because I uploaded a writing vlog back in March that a lot of you guys seem to really like. I believe it's actually the most watched video on my channel to date. And I'm happy to report I will have more writing vlogs coming soon. I have a number of projects that I am working on both in the middle grade space, the adult romance space, and I think historical fiction space too. Historical fiction project is going to be a lot more of a longer, more heavier project for me, so I will talk about that in my next writing vlog, but either the next video or the video after that will definitely be a writing vlog. I'm continuing to work on this middle grade project that I have called Project WM. It's a lot of fun to work on. I'm really enjoying building the world and the characters. I never really thought I would say the words like having fun with writing, because even though I've never found writing to be like burdensome or like hard for me, it's kind of doing this whole thing creatively is really new for me and I'm having a really good time with it. That being said, it is challenging to like kind of think about the task of finishing a whole book. It's very daunting, so I'm really trying to be mindful and just take one thing at a time. So yes, there will be more writing vlogs coming soon and I'm really excited to share all the things with you guys. I probably won't go too in-depth because I don't want to spoil the content of the projects themselves, but I will definitely give you an insight into my writing process and kind of the ideas I'm coming up with. So with all that out of the way, I think I'm going to wrap up the vlog here because I have to get to work today. Thank you guys as always for checking out the video. Your support means so much to me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe drop a comment. Let me know what are you reading or what are you writing. I'm always curious to know what you guys are working on. But that is it for me today. Thank you guys again for checking out the video. My name is Alessandro, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!